What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. You watching the bread? Chess of the bread, yeah. Get a subscriber tap. Chess of the bread. Chess of the bread. If you're not already subscribed, girl, hurry up. You already know the drill. I'm not even going to tell you too much, okay? So, boom. Before we get into it, I did want to show you guys a small business creator who is also a supporter of mine. I'm going to be putting on the screen pictures and maybe even some videos of her products. Everything in her shop is handmade. Yes, handmade. She offers customized rolling trays, ashtrays, holding jars. Her rolling trays are versatile. You can use them to hold your perfumes. You can you can use them for anything, literally. She can do any picture, any design, and she also offers the option to add gold leaf, silver leaves, iridescent stickers, butterfly stickers, glitter. I'm going to put her Etsy shop name as well as her Instagram name on the screen. I think they are super cute. I'm going to go ahead and cop me one so if you guys are interested in supporting a small business go ahead and cop so now to the story first of all let me know if you guys like this lighting i feel like for this particular room like how the lighting is set up i feel like the lighting is really good in here i know i said that this was going to be the last time um where i do a story time in this setup i don't think that y'all really care though to be honest y'all just want the tea i don't really care where i am to give it to you guys so yeah so boom this is the story time y'all read the title of me fighting my co-worker i absolutely did she had it coming um, and y'all this really was the worst job experience I have ever had like I did a, a worst job experience story time of when I worked at this place and they were very racist and stuff like that but I was like when I was really really young this is a job that I had when I was an adult like I already was 18 years old I was already you know what I'm saying I was an adult so I feel like the stuff that went on at this job and the stuff that I put up with at this job is just ridiculous for everybody that I was working with to be adults too like I'm an adult y'all are adults so what is going on here like why is this happening 2019 is when i graduated class of 2019 is the best class it's the only class i do not care if you are not part of class of 2019 you are not valid simple no i'm just playing Psych! <laughs> so around this time i was broke as y'all like i'm not even joking this is after i had already dropped out of um college or whatever this is right before the pandemic this is right before i start making content like this is around the time where i first actually started making tiktoks i actually started making tiktoks at that job like i was making tiktoks in the bathroom and stuff we're gonna get to all that though so i don't know if y'all know like the geographics of atlanta or whatever but where i went to high school it was like the outskirts of atlanta it definitely was not in atlanta at all um you it could be considered like metro atlanta but the neighboring city to the city that i went to high school it wasn't even the hood either it was more just like where everybody wanted to be hood and where everything was cheaper so i guess to some people like if you're suburban suburban then you might think that this city is the ghetto but if you're from the hood for real then it wouldn't really be considered the ghetto to you so like i said me and my boyfriend had ended up moving in with my brother and his wife and they were not playing with us like we were already 18 19 so we needed to pay bills we, or not bills but we needed to pay rent to stay there and i don't know about y'all but fresh out of college dropping out of college i didn't really have no job we had just moved to this city um and i didn't have no job so i had to look for a job i'm talking about y'all i applied for every store in the vicinity like i applied for walmart home depot all of that stuff nobody was calling me back so one day y'all i ended up going into the beauty master i don't know if y'all have beauty masters where y'all live or whatever but the beauty supply stores like the big beauty supply stores that are out here in atlanta are called beauty masters so i ended up going to my like little local beauty master that was close to my brother's house and i didn't go in there like inquiring about a job i don't know why like i didn't really think to apply to work there or anything like that i was just going in there i think to get lip gloss or a lip liner or something like that and i end up going to the register and i see this asian lady and she's just like oh you're so pretty and she's like complimenting me or whatever and she's the one checking me out and i assumed that she had to be the owner or something because she was telling people what to do and stuff like that like as she was checking me out and she was like um did you apply to work here and i was like no <laughs> like in my head i was thinking like is this girl doing some type of magic on me like can she read my mind or something is she a fortune teller because why do you know that i'm looking for a job babe? Eh? like i didn't apply here but shoot if y'all hiring let me know some so she ended up writing my name and my number down she asked me if i had transportation she asked me if i was over 18 and she asked me if i can come back tomorrow at 3 p.m so i'm thinking in my head like oh like this is great like this is gravy like this is the easiest thing that i've ever experienced in my life literally she's about to just give me a job on the spot of course girl i can come back at 3 p.m like i told her yes i have transportation i drove here i'm 18 well in 2019 
yeah i was 18 i'm 18 years old baby like now that i think about it like thinking back to that situation that's kind of a red flag like y'all can argue with me in the comments but if a job is like not going through the proper process of like onboarding like if they're not you know making sure that you even meet the requirements of the job like if you if you working at a beauty supply store then you obviously need to know at least a little bit about beauty about the products about you know braiding hair you need to have some type of retail experience or you know custom customer service experience or something like you're not asking me no questions of about where i have previously worked like nothing like that and i'm thinking like maybe when i come in at three she's going to properly interview me because that's happened to me before where i've like asked somebody if they're hiring or i wanted to talk to a manager at a place where i wanted to work and they basically were like come back tomorrow for like a a proper interview or whatever like you can get a job on a spot like that but at least they do a proper interview you get what i'm saying so i'm just like okay well this is kind of weird but i'm not complaining because i need a job so i'm like yeah i'll come back at three boom so i pull up the next day 3 p.m and y'all immediately i'm hired on like no more questions are asked no experience questions no tell me about yourself no no oh what have you had to overcome in a difficult situation dealing with customers and how did you overcome it? like no no questions no interview questions literally nothing the only question that she asked me was what size i wore in the shirts like the shirts that said beauty master she asked me what size i needed and literally that was it she told me she gave me like a paper that had my little schedule on it like she made my schedule boom 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 literally in the room that we're in i guess the room that you're supposed to get an interview in she's literally typing up my damn schedule she asked me oh she all she did ask me what my availability was why am why am i saying availability i've never said that in my life she asked me what my availability is and i don't know about y'all but from for minimum wage i'm not doing the most i'm not bending over backwards i'm not scrubbing nobody's feet i am not reaching for the stars i'm not doing all that so one thing about me is i was not working on saturday and i was not working on sunday sunday was my relaxation day and saturday was my young intern day like friday you can catch me because when I get off, I can still go be young and turn, but I'm definitely not working on no damn Saturday and Sunday. So I basically told her I was available Monday through Friday, any shift, morning shift, closing shift, I don't care, but that I could not work on Saturday and Sunday. And I remember telling her that like I watched my nieces or no, I only had one niece at the time. I told her that I watched my niece on Saturday and Sundays and like it was a set in stone thing that I've been doing for years and that it's not, it's not budging, like there's no way. Which it wasn't technically a lie because again, I was living with my niece. So on the weekends, my brother did have me like, you know, watching her whenever he would go. Um, He had, he, he drives trucks, so he would be at work and my sister-in-law had a job, so she would be at work or whatever. So sometimes I would be watching um my niece or whatever, but I made it seem like to her, like I was a mother, like you will not catch me on no Saturday and Sunday, period. I really didn't know the magnitude of working around nothing but other women and just a, a lot of estrogen and especially for the girls the kind of girls that i was working with like i just didn't think nothing of it like if anything i was like it's corny to say i was being a girl's girl but i was like in my head excited like okay i'm gonna be you know we're gonna probably be lit like this is gonna be fun i'm gonna meet new girls we're gonna you know build friendships or whatever team building like i was so excited y'all like is this like a what is it called like a a sisterhood that i'm that i'm approaching right now is this a sisterhood like no nope. y'all and if my lash is lifting don't say nothing to me don't don't do that that's that's very anti-black of you so when it comes to naming these people i'm not gonna lie i really forgot like 90 percent of the girls that i worked with names um i definitely remember two of the girls that i was cool with my girl stassi and my girl ab those were my homegirls i mean i didn't know them prior to the job but like i became cool with them we didn't work like alongside each other too too much but they were definitely always nice to me helpful whenever i needed it and they were just cool like i didn't have a problem with everybody at this job obviously the girls that weren't haters liked me and then there were the minions that hate nasty i would say there was probably like all together 10 or so different girls that i worked with and i'm only gonna name two of them well i'm gonna name the managers because okay so miss kim is gonna be the name of the owner lady like the asian lady who hired me on she's basically the hire hiring main what the hiring manager slash like owner or owner's wife one of the two i remember she was either the owner or the owner's wife and we're just gonna name her miss kim because i'm pretty sure that was her real name and then we're gonna name the gms so there were two gms if this will focus please please don't don't piss me off don't piss me off one of them's name was Brittany, and i don't remember the other girl's name and i don't care 
I'm gonna name y'all because I remember y'all names and y'all had me up and I don't care so Brittany she's gonna be GM number one I'm only gonna name them GM number one and two because I don't remember the, the second GM's name so we're gonna do GM number one and GM number two just know GM number one is Brittany this beauty master was huge like the biggest beauty master I have ever seen in my entire freaking life it's, it was huge and it was split up like on the left side there was the cosmetic section all the makeup the lashes woo 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 the middle section was the registers there were like six registers and then in the back on the right side it was all the braiding hair all the way on the left side it was apparel and then all the way in the back it was wigs the way that they did it was they trained everybody on the register first just in case you know it's really busy and they need extra people on the registers everybody needs to know how to work a register which was no problem for me because i damn been a cashier multiple times before this so yeah that's one and then you can work the cosmetic section like you can work every different section but apparel was like one in one with wigs and cosmetics was also one in one with like the register like they would switch off because it was so close and then you could have main floor which was just all the aisles that were in the middle all the hair products all that crap and then there was a girl that was permanently on the braiding section because there was a little register in the braiding hair section like in the hair section where the bundles and all that was and there was always a girl that was my girl Stasi. she was in the braiding section and so sometimes it would be this other girl y'all and i could not stand her she's just one of the minions i'm not going to name all the minions but she would not help me for y'all but we're going to get to that so i was told that after i was done with my training which since I was training on the register, I also had to deal with cosmetics. But after that, I was going to be on main floor. Which, y'all, main floor was the worst job that you could freaking have at this place. Because it was so much you had to do. Like, you had to, pretty much with every department, you had to also work the register. So, it was always extra sh that you had to do for $8 an hour. Baby, please. So, we're going to give the name of the girl, like the main girl in this whole thing. Well, there was really two main girls. But there was a girl who worked in the cosmetic section, like predominantly, who was training me in the cosmetic section. And um, not really in the register. Like, I really, like, once I first, like, logged into the register and figured out where everything is, I didn't need nobody to train me on the register, which was good. But she was the one who was training me in the cosmetic section. And we're going to give her the name gnome because she looked like a garden gnome you could literally stick her in your garden and she would keep all the 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 boogie monster away or whatever no gnome, garden gnomes are originally for she looked like a garden gnome no shade just saying it how it is and we're gonna give the name to the other girl dream and i promise to explain to you guys later why i named her dream um really don't got nothing bad to say about her she was a she was a pretty girl and she was cool at first but both of them were cool at first to be honest but um can't give her really no silly name because there wasn't really nothing I could fault about her other than that she was just weird and I don't want to just name her weird so we gonna name her Dream. So the first day that I came in I got showed to my locker in the little break room in the back it was like a bunch of lockers and everybody had to put their phone and everything in a locker. Now I'm not going to lie I never in my life put my phone in the locker my phone was in my back pocket and I would just like have my little shirt because it wasn't no crop top it was a regular old shirt and i was bigger back then so my shirt was a large and it was like I was, i'm still short even though i was wide like my back was big i needed to unbig my back for real but um my back was big but i was still short so my shirt was definitely covering like the pockets of my jeans or whatever so i kept my phone in my back pocket on silent because ain't nobody got time for that i'm not gonna leave my phone in no damn locker so bitches can be on my phone trying to take it everybody had to buy like a clear bag or whatever like this is pretty normal in a lot of jobs especially like retail jobs just to make sure you're not walking out with anything you're not stealing nothing you don't got no sticky fingers so um and they had little clear bags there so i ended up buying one of their clear bags to put in my locker basically like my keys my lip gloss all that crap will go in the clear bag my first day i'm walking in and it's a opening shift it's early in the morning and i see dream now the only reason that she like st stood out to me or whatever like why, why we probably gravitated to talk to each other was because she looked really close in age with me a lot of the girls that I worked with there were older than me. There was this girl, Trimetria. She was like 25. AB, she was like 24, I think. Um, Stasi, she was like 25, I think, or 23, and I was only 18. So I talked to all of them, and they were really cool. But, like, Dream looked like she was probably 18, maybe even, like, 19, maybe even 17. Like, she looked like she was closer in age with me. So, like, we just started talking to each other when we came in. She's just like, oh, you're new. Woo -woo -woo. She's like, you're going to like it here. It's pretty chill. Um, a, a, most of the girls are cool or whatever. And, you know, it's just, she was just talking to me on some casual stuff, right? Now, yeah, 
the girl was i'm not gonna lie she was kind of looking at me like she wanted me like is you lgb because your gun pink <laughs> The gun was most definitely pink. Like, her gun was hot pink. Like, she was looking at me like that. Now, if y'all know, I always say it in my story times because I do not care. If it's relevant, I'm going to say it. I put the B in LGBT. But they didn't know that. Like, I didn't tell them that. I had a boyfriend, so I didn't really have no reason to tell anybody that. Like, it's nobody's business unless somebody's interested in you. You don't just walk around with a rainbow on your forehead, right? So, I didn't know at the time if she was, you know, like, if her gun was actually pink, it was just giving that vibe. Like, usually my little radar, my little gaydar, it be, it be right, like, every time. It never fails me. But she wasn't my type. I wasn't interested in her. I wasn't even attracted to her. She was a pretty girl, but she definitely was not attractive to me. So just keep these things in mind. So whenever, like, there would be two cashiers already on the register, and then I, like, saw the line getting slow, I would have to go over to cosmetics, put stuff away. And on the register, one of our duties or whatever, I'm so childish. So honestly, y'all, I could make, like, a shameless level series that long 11 seasons of all the stuff that happened at this job but i'm gonna give y'all the main things that really like traumatized me that led up to me having to put hands on somebody like you know when somebody swings you can either duck or you can swing back and which one you gonna do because it's not guaranteed that if you duck you gonna you know dodge the the hit or whatever so you might as well just swing back first red flag first thing that put gnome on my sh list was there was a time where okay so Miss Kim was not the one that was on the shift with us all the time. Like, she would come in periodically. She would come in randomly. We would never know when she's coming. Probably to, like, see what we're up to and, and stuff like that. But she would not be there the whole shift or nothing like that. The GMs were the ones that would be on shift with us. It would be one GM per shift. So, there was this time where, mind you, I didn't really get the rules told to me by the GMs or nothing like that. Like, they were the ones who would just approve, you know, time off and stuff like that. But, like, the trainees or, like, the trainers, trainees? No, if you're getting trained, you're the trainee, I believe. So, the people who were training, they were the ones who would basically show you the ropes, teach you all the, the rules, give you all the, the what not to do, what to do, and all that stuff. Which, that can be dangerous because... Don't give nobody with no regular job title the job of training people and, you know, giving them crucial information if you're not paying them more. Because nine times out of ten, they're not going to care to really do that job well. Like, imagine making me work, like, the job title of, like, a damn manager, a trainer, and a goddamn regular employee. Like, no, you're doing way too much. I'm working with Gnome, and again, she's showing me that, like, I'm really shadowing her. Like, she's showing me where the lashes go because y'all know like when you go to the beauty supply store every lash at the beauty supply store has a different code different number and all that stuff she's showing me like easy ways to know where to put the lashes she's showing me where the lip stuff is all that stuff like she's just basically showing me and there's there was also a register at the cosmetic side i remember i didn't get my break like the way that i was originally getting my break was just asking the manager like can i take my break and she would be like yeah go and mind you it didn't matter how many hours you worked we got a 10 minute break and then we got a 15 minute break for lunch literally like if you work a shift where you where you have lunch or whatever you just get a 15 minute break for lunch and then you get a 10 like one other break during the day for like 10 minutes which i guess that's not that bad like i i heard stories of people damn near not getting a break just getting a break whenever like it's not busy and sometimes it'd be five minutes sometimes it'd be 10 minutes so i don't know i was pretty grateful for you know having two set breaks or whatever so this particular day i couldn't find the gm like i could not find her anywhere and i wanted to take my break and it was not busy at all so i ended up like telling what's her name gnome i was like damn i want to take my 10 like i think that i needed to use the bathroom or something and i just wanted to like go ahead and take my break or whatever and she ended up telling me like oh girl like if you can't find the gm or whatever and it's not busy you can just punch out like you can just clock out and go take your break like you don't have to do all that like you don't have to find her if you can't find her it's okay like they don't care so I was like, are you sure? And she's like, girl, I'm training you. They wouldn't have me training you if I didn't know what I was talking about. Like, she's like, girl, go. Go ahead and just clock out and just go back. And I'm like, okay, but is, y'all, this is, this is where I, she should have told me the truth because, girl, I asked her, okay, is that just something that y'all be doing, like, that y'all not supposed to do? Or is that, like, literally allowed? And she was like, oh, no, Miss Kim said it, like, it was allowed. Like, you can, you can do that without getting in trouble. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that. Because, like, I don't know if y'all want to call me lame or what, but I wasn't finna do no, like, 
little thing that the the employees be doing when i'm new like i'm not about to do that like y'all might do stuff like that y'all might sneak out in the back on y'all break and smoke or or take a shot like i don't care what y'all doing if i'm new i'm gonna be on my p's and q's especially when i need the money like i really needed the money at the time so i really wasn't trying to do anything that could get me into trouble um but with her telling me that miss kim allowed it i believed her because why would you tell me something wrong why would you lead me astray why, like you know what i'm saying i had no reason to think that she would be lying to me fast forward i did this for about probably five days um i didn't go over my time like i didn't do a 15 minute break instead of a 10 like i did my 10 minute break i literally started my damn clock watch and everything like i did not want to get in trouble for you know punching wrong like i don't got i worked at the gas station for kroger and i used to get in trouble for like taking my break two minutes past the time like it was just a mess so i had ptsd and i used to make sure that like i when i was taking my 10 i was taking my 10 baby you not no 11 not no 12 a 10. i was like since we're allowed to just punch out as long as it's not busy that's what i was doing so fast forward i give called to the back like the little break room by miss kim so miss kim ends up saying why have you been punching out without permission so i'm like what are you talking about and she's like have you been taking your break without you know approving it with the gms like Brittany didn't say that you could take your break and you would just be taking it. I can see on the punch sheet that you're punching out and I don't have any sign. Like You know, apparently, like, they were signing stuff in order, like, once you get your approved break, they're, like, signing it off or whatever, which some people might argue that I should have known this, but if you are putting your employees to train me and they're telling me something, then I'm going to go by what they're telling me. Like, I would not expect somebody that's authorized to train me to tell me something wrong. So, she asked me and I'm like, oh, I thought that that was something that we could do. Because Noam told me that as long as we weren't busy and I couldn't find, like, the GM or whatever, that I, I didn't have to get it approved. I could just punch out and take my 10. Now, I don't care if y'all want to call me a snitch. I am 69 at this point. 69? I will snitch I do not care I'm not doing I'm not getting in trouble for nobody I'm not doing time for nobody I'm not getting fired for nobody don't care not nah, but for real like I'm gonna tell her that you told me to do that because you did you literally told me that I could do that so I'm not about to get in trouble baby no so she calls known back to the back office or whatever and she basically is like why did you tell her that it was like not against the rules to punch out as long as we're not busy like you know that that's not how things work and no, I'm gonna say, oh, that's not what I told her. Are you delusional? Do, or do you suffer from a mental illness? What? What do you mean? Like, this is the moment where I like, I had like my spidey senses started tingling and I'm like, okay, so she's one of them. I can already foresee myself beating her ass. But no, I didn't think all that. I was just like, damn, so you're weird. Okay, cool. So I'm like looking at her funny and like before I even have a chance to be like, girl, so you didn't tell me what you just told me like she gets sent back to the cosmetic section to go back to work like she was like oh i told her she needed to punch out for emergency to make sure she told you because you would need to sign it up or something like that and like literally y'all i don't smoke i don't have memory problems i don't have memory loss i don't have early set dementia dementia definitely is hereditary for me but not at 20 or not at 18 years old baby so i definitely remember what you said and that is not what you said so i'm just looking at her i'm funny in the face like huh like girl are you being for real right now and she gets sent back to cosmetics to go back to work so miss kim ends up telling me if i punch out again without permission it's going to be a write-up and just to not do it again and i'm just like okay girl like i'm not about to go back and forth with you or her i'm not about to go back and forth with nobody now i know that if i need like any crucial information about any type of rules not to listen to her and to just ask miss kim or the gms because no so at this point i'm not really getting trained by gnome anymore because i don't learned like what i needed to learn already but we're still working alongside each other because my training period wasn't over um and i start to peep her being jealous of me and dream so i kind of stopped talking about dream but we would just talk on the register because like she was always on the register next to my register when i was on it and we would just be talking and chopping it up and kikiing and stuff like that and i guess her and Noam were pretty good friends already and I guess Noam was getting jealous or she was just being a weirdo I don't really know but I started to peep like she would be side eyeing me while me and her are talking like I don't know if she liked her like if she had a crush on her or what it was but mind you everybody that I worked with knew I had a boyfriend like they followed me like everybody got each other's numbers followed each other and I posted my boyfriend all the time like 
they knew I had a boyfriend, so I don't even know what type of time she was on, what, what this jealousy thing was coming from. Like, I was literally just cool with Dream. She started to make little comments like, Oh, you know Dream's my little girlfriend or whatever. And the first time she ever said that, I thought that she was being for real, and it, like, kind of clicked in my head why she was side-eyeing me like that. And I was just like, oh, girl, like, I didn't know that that was your girlfriend. And she was like, oh, no, 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 she's not really my girlfriend, like, but she's my girlfriend. Like, she was just basically calling her her damn work wife. Like, I didn't know people had work wives at places like the beauty supply store like girl we are not in our mid-30s working at an office why are you calling her your work wife that shit is cringe but i was just like okay girl like y'all cute like okay like i didn't care like i don't know why you're telling me this like i don't know why you're telling me that y'all are fake girlfriends like cool i don't give a to be honest she starts asking me like do i like her and asking me like am i feeling her and stuff like that and i'm like girl i have a boyfriend like i'm not feeling her no she's just my homegirl like we're just cool like not even my homegirl like i don't even know y'all for real i'm just talking to her because i'm here for eight hours and i don't know what else to do but talk to the people that i work with like girl what are you talking about she's just like well i feel like dream likes you like i see how she be looking at you but she wasn't lying like dream i told y'all like it looked like her gun was pink like she did look like that but she looked at other girls like that at the store too like i feel like she just had like a flirtatious way about herself but that don't got nothing to do with me so I'm just like, oh, I don't think she likes me. Like, I don't think it's nothing like that. Like, she just be talking, we be talking about regular stuff. Like, she don't really be giving me the impression that she likes me or whatever. Like, I didn't know what to say to this girl. Like, why are you saying this to me right now? Fast forward a little bit more and Dream starts acting weird to me. Like, she's not really talking to me much. Like, when we would be on the register, we would literally be dying laughing. Like, we would be kikiing with each other. We would be talking, like, the entire time we were on the register. Obviously, like, in between customers or whatever. But, like, we were real cool. We would talk in the break room. We would talk coming into the shift. Like, we were always talking to each other. So, she starts acting hella, like, dry. Hella, like weird like you can just sense a, a girl's energy when it's off like she's just acting like a weirdo like she's not really talking to me i'm talking to her and she's kind of just being like mm, yeah like yeah like cool like, okay like i'm like oh girl did i offend you did i do something like what is your problem what is your beef are we beefy right now what's going on so this is where like my friends come in like a b or whatever that was one of the girls that i was real cool with she was also one of the girls that would be on and off on the register and she was older than me so she, like she felt like big sis or whatever at the job and i had texted her and i was like i don't know what the no i didn't even text her i'm pretty sure that she like witnessed the shit. like we were on the register and she saw um dream acting weird towards me and i was just like girl like i don't know if i should say some because i really don't want no drama here like i really don't want to like y'all i already experienced a bad job experience before this i already experienced not liking the girls that i worked with or the people that i worked with and having problems at work i did not want to dread coming into work i did not want to have no little high school drama if i wanted that i would have stayed in college she knew her longer than me ab had been working there over a year so i was just kind of asking her like how she would approach the situation just because i know that sometimes i don't approach the situation the best way no cap like I could have came off harsh, I could have came off rude, and I really didn't want to do that. So I just wanted a second opinion on how I should approach the situation. AB, long story short, ends up telling me like, yeah, some things you should just let go. But I feel like since y'all are cool, like you should ask her. Like maybe, maybe you did something and you like, you know, just didn't realize it. Communication goes a long way. Like just ask her. So she's like, but not at the workplace. Like don't ask her here because if Kim, if Miss Kim overhears like any type of confrontation, like anything like that miss kim was not into it so she was just like just hit her up whatever day this was after work i ended up texting dream and i was just like i mean i didn't say what's t i don't even think that was the lingo back then but i was just like hey like is are we okay like i don't i don't understand like the the energy like i don't know if you got pressure with me but if i did something just let me know like if there's an issue just let me know and like some people might say that that comes off you know like i'm trying to check her on some but like that's just to me that's just a direct question like you're acting like you had an issue i don't know what the issue is i don't know that there is an issue for sure so i'm asking if there is one and if there is one for you let me know what it is i don't really see the problem with that so immediately i get added to a group chat i know you fucking lying bitch <laughs> <laughs> with her and with numb she doesn't respond to my message she doesn't say nothing she doesn't answer the question nothing she just puts me in a group chat with her and numb so i already know where this is finna go i don't know if these <laughs> thought that they was finna bully me at my job i don't know if they thought that they were finna like get under my skin or something but basically 
Um, she ends up saying, So what did Chester tell you, Gnome? And Gnome's like, She told me that you like her, and that you're always flirting with her, and that you want her. Which I didn't say none of that to Dream. Dream literally said that to me. I mean, not Dream. Gnome said that to me. I didn't say that. Like, I'm not the type of person to even be chatting about who has a crush on me. Like, that's corny. Like, that is so corny. Especially about somebody that I don't even know their sexuality. Like, you literally, in my opinion, you don't ask nobody their sexuality unless you're interested in them. I never asked Dream what her sexuality was. If I was interested in her, I would have asked her, like, you know, do you like girls? Or, like, you know what I'm saying? I would have made my move or whatever. If I wanted her, I could have had her. So I'm like, why are you even playing on my talk like that? Like, I never said none of that. This is just a moment where I felt like Gnome had to be significantly... Like, not in the same way that I'm mentally ill, but, like she had to be a pathological liar she had to be a sociopath she had to be something like something had to be wrong upstairs because why would you even lie like that like you lied to miss kim and now you lying on my name again like you must want me to hit you but i'm not even gonna give you that satisfaction just yet because what is wrong with you my dreams like yeah i don't f with that chester that's lame to me because i have a girlfriend and i don't need no type of rumors going around about me liking you woo, woo, woo. so i put three laughing emojis i remember specifically three laughing emojis and then i left the group chat like i don't know what you thought this was babe i don't know like if y'all thought y'all was just eating me up but i have no words absolutely like no words because i felt like that shit was comedy and i really did not have anything to say because I don't know like when it comes to confrontation like I don't have no interest in clearing anything up for you I don't feel like I owe you no type of explanation in high school you feel like I'm talking about you then you feel like I'm talking about you like I do not care to prove to you that I didn't say something that you think that I said because what are you going to do about it if I did say that type of thing so I was just like I put three laughing emojis and I left the group chat I don't know if they thought that I was gonna like i was shaking in my boots and i was finna quit my job or something and not show up the next day or whatever but i came to work the next day or the next shift that i had or whatever like regular and as expected it's crickets like they're side eyeing me and stuff and kiki and or whatever but they didn't say nothing to me nothing else was addressed nobody came and nothing was on site none of that like it was literally crickets in the workplace dream is attempting to give me the silent treatment but like to, in order to give somebody the silent treatment successfully, the person that you're giving the silent, silent treatment to has to be trying to talk to you. I'm not trying to talk to you after that. You put me in a group chat and you're acting weird and you think that I want to talk to you now. Like, girl, I do not care to talk to you now. You're weird just like your friend Gnome. Both of y'all belong in the garden. I do not care. Like, please. Eventually, I start working the floor, which I'm glad for because I don't have to be around these two girls as much. At this point, everything gets unorganized. They put me one day on braiding hair. They put me one day in the cosmetic section. The next day, I'm working wigs and it just got all jumbled up. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I was really, really struggling on um, the braiding hair section. Like, when I tell y'all there was a million girls working at this damn job, like there were, there was already like, like I said, my homegirl Stassi, she was permanently on braiding. Like she knew the ins and outs of the braiding hair. I'm pretty sure that this girl could braid hair too. Like she knew the different types of braiding hair, the Konecalon, the freaking, I don't even, I can't even name you another braiding hair brand. So like I said, y'all, this time I was in a relationship and you know, when you're in a relationship, you know what you, you do relations. So like we're not going to get too nitty gritty about that because you two be playing with me sometimes. Love y'all. Love you, YouTube. Love you. But, um, yeah, so um, around this time, I remember the night before I had to go into work, I was cramping really, really bad, and I had passed, ew, this is TMI, I had passed a little clot um, that was about the size of, like, a golf ball, almost, like, a pretty big clot or whatever, and I didn't know if that was my period, I didn't know what was going on, but, like, the cramping pain was different than any other type of pain I ever had, like, it was worse than a period cramp and I don't even cramp like that when I'm on my period like I have aches I don't know if y'all experienced why am I getting into like so this was very foreign for me to feel like in my body so I had ended up calling the GM the GM1 which is the GM that was going to be on shift with me the next day and I had basically told her like hey I told her what, what went on because it was required for us to give them like a reason you couldn't just say oh I got to call off even you couldn't even just say I'm sick like you would have to give them details like are you nauseous type of sick like if you had just a cold baby they was calling you in like that was not an approved um off day or whatever like you couldn't get off for that so I ended up telling her what happened thinking you know she would keep it between me and her and maybe even like me 
her GM2 and Miss Kim if like it was required for them to all know the reason for me you know taking time off or whatever but yeah I ended up telling her like oh I don't know what's going on I don't know if this is just you know something going wrong with my cycle or I don't know if I just miscarried like I didn't know like I didn't even know that I was expecting at the time so I had ended up telling her like um that I'm gonna go to urgent care or something I had ended up going to the doctor that night and that I was gonna update her and let her know if I was coming in the next day and she was just like okay she was dry about it very very dry she was like she wasn't like oh like let me know an update oh no like I hope you're okay it was like she literally said okay and that was it i ended up going to the doctor and finding out that i indeed did miscarry and it wasn't like i was like really affected by it because i was expecting or anything or like i knew i was or anything it was more so just like that was a lot so i was just like okay um i called the gm and i told her what happened and i told her that i wouldn't be coming in but she just basically was like okay when are you coming in and i told her i'll be coming in like the following shift like i wasn't taking no week off i wasn't taking days off i just needed the day to like you know recuperate or whatever and and rest because i was in pain and then i had came into my next shift or whatever had showed up for my next shift the shift that i come in for i check in with the gms or whatever and they don't ask me if i'm okay they don't say nothing they could care less they just they just was worried about finding somebody to cover my shifts i guess that's their only concern um and then i hear dream talking to gnome and says something about a baby mind you not on some corny like but like for real like if i know like if i peep that you're talking about me but you're not saying it loud enough for me to hear it or you're not saying it to me then i don't really care because if you was really like about it you would have said it to me so i was just like looking but i wasn't like i wasn't even sure what she said like i didn't want to assume that she was talking about me just because like you know be projecting because of the situation that i just had and whole time she said she like little baby or something like i wasn't gonna be assuming what she was talking about but i felt like it was about me because they was looking over at me and stuff but then gnome ends up saying to me because we're both on, on the cosmetic section at this point she ends up saying to me like oh you really came back that fast so i'm like came back that fast like what are you talking about because i'm not assuming that she knows my business or my situation because that has nothing to do with her she didn't cover my shift she didn't none of that like even if she did take my shift i don't think that it's required for them to tell you why you need to take my shift or cover my shift are you crazy she's just like oh well me personally if i just lost a baby i wouldn't have come back to work the next day so at this point i'm tight because i don't know if you are implying that i'm lying to you like or not lying to you because i didn't tell you but i don't know if you're implying that i lied about the situation or if you're just saying like you're just trying to be funny like i don't know what your angle here is but i don't like it because it's none of your it's none of your business i said something like well good thing that it's not you that it happened to like so mind your business like how much hate in your heart can you really have to say something like that to a person like whether you know if they're telling the truth or not i just would not say something like that off of the sole fact that they might be telling the truth like what so i, I basically told her like mind your business and good thing that that is that is me and not you and she's just like i don't know she scoffs like she was literally given that she felt like she was in a sick like like in mean girls or something like you're not about to bully me out this job and you're not going to keep playing with me either like those are just two things that are not going to happen i ended up going and confronting gm1 because i don't like that like why do the little like why is it through the grapevine what happened to me like why is that something that's just getting passed around the beauty supply store right now so i went ahead and asked her like hey i don't know why anybody else knows my situation but i don't really appreciate it because i only was telling you because i had to for real like i wouldn't have told you that if i didn't have to but i didn't want to just call off and not give a reason or whatever but i felt like my information should have been confidential like i don't really like how you repeated it like what, what's going on and she's just basically like oh i'm so sorry um let me just clear that up like the girls were worried about you because no one was working that day and you know you usually work with her so she was worried about you and she was asking where you were fuck out of here and saying how you know she just was worried that you didn't come in and i knew this was cap off rip because she knew that me and gnome had fallen out like the gms were literally just as young as us maybe like a couple years older they like gossiped just like the rest of everybody else like they knew that me and gnome and like they knew about the group chat they knew about all of that like i would hear like gossip throughout the beauty supply store and i didn't really care because i knew that like if i needed to walk somebody like a dog that i was very much capable but like i already knew that she knew that we weren't cool 
And I knew that that was Kat because why would she be worried about me or asking about me in a genuine way when we don't even like each other? So, okay, girl, like you, you think that I'm stupid. That's cute. But I left it alone. I wasn't finna go back and forth with her because she had the potential, like she had the authority to get me fired. So I wasn't finna go there with her. I was just like, okay. Um, and she was like, but it won't happen again. Like she was trying to keep a little bit of professionalism, even though there was no professionalism there. Like she was not being rude about it. Like she would have been dead wrong to be rude to me about something like that. So I'll give it to her that she was like on some like, oh, it wasn't in a malicious way. Like next time I won't, I just will keep it to myself. Like, duh, girl. Why? Like... Isn't that common sense? There were times that they would let the girls that were on the registers go on break when it was busy, when the line was literally like damn near wrapping around the store and I'll be the only one on the register. They would call two girls at a time to go take their break just so that I would have to deal with all the customers. There were times where literally there was a time where they switched Stasi, the girl that was on the braiding section permanently, switched her to floor randomly one day and put me on braiding hair by myself knowing that I struggled in that section. That was literally the only section that I struggled in. Mind you, you might be thinking like, oh, maybe they just wanted you to, you know, get better in that section so they wanted to put you there more no they literally knew like as soon as they found out that I struggled in that section they put me in that section and took her off of it and again never was there ever any other girl other than like this one girl that was switched with Stasi on the braiding hair because Stasi literally like dominated the braiding hair section there were so many girls at this job that they didn't need everybody to know every single thing every single section I knew the cosmetic section I worked the apparel section I worked the register they didn't even have to train me on the register I worked the floor like y'all cannot put me on the braiding section y'all can live with not having me on the braiding section i specifically told them like i am not good with this section i do not like feel comfortable working on this section and it wasn't required of me like the literal job title that i had was cashier that's what's the problem with these nine to fives like or not nine to fives but like these minimum wage jobs these little retail store jobs like they will literally make you do things that are not in your job title or like they'll fire you like literally another weird thing there was this time where i was working the floor and like this older lady she was probably like in her 40 like not 40s that's not that old but like, she was like in her 50s and she had came up to me and was like hey like your hair is so beautiful and i had like it was my hair but i had like highlights i had like like honey brown highlights like, it was not cute it was very poorly done but like it was it was okay and mind you my curls were not like as curly as it is right now like my hair was damaged and but my hair was still like long or whatever like you could still tell that my hair was pretty long so oh all the gloss is dripping she asked me either can you show me um where in the store you got your wig or she was like where'd you get your wig from now I didn't really think nothing of it when she asked me that because a lot of people thought my hair was a wig some people still think that my hair is a wig like that that's not what offended me because if my hair looks like a wig then that means that my hair looks good babe unless you're trying to say that it's like all big at the top or something like that but like i could tell that she was gen being genuine with her question so i wasn't about to get mad at her for asking me that if anything i took it as a compliment and i just laughed it off and i was like oh this isn't a wig or whatever this is my hair and she looked like surprised and she was like oh because the um the lady that's working over there she told me that she, you got your wig from here and I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, she pointed out the girl and it was freaking gnome. It's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I don't even know what to say. And she was like, oh, she told me, like, I told her that your hair was so beautiful and like how all you girls were so beautiful. And she told me that, that you got your hair from here. What is this girl's problem with me? Like, what is her vendetta? Like, like, did she know me in another life? Like, what is your beef with me? Like, this is getting weird. And instead of me saying something to her, I was just like, oh, I don't know why she would tell you that because this is definitely my hair. I never told her, like, I don't even talk to her. So I don't know why she would say something like that. And the lady was just like, oh, okay, well, thank you anyways. And I ended up showing her to a wig that was similar to my hair type. And I was like, here you go. Like, I felt like, not killing the girl with kindness but it was just like i was trying to I, I wasn't even trying to it wasn't i wasn't stunning none of that like it wasn't bothering me she was trying so hard to get under my skin and it really wasn't working the way that she thought it was like it was more so corny to me like i hate nothing more than a girl who is just hateful to other girls for no reason like i don't like them type of girls i do not mesh well with them type of girls if we do not get along nine times out of ten it's because you're a hater and i'm not even lying so this specific day i had agreed to work a double me and this other girl we were both working a double so basically we were open to close so 
um i was told by gm1 that she needed me to work the first half of my shift in cosmetics i think or no on the floor and then the second half of my shift i would be on the register like the entire time so there were two girls it was the girl that was working a double and um no she was the only one on the register because i think we were short staffed that day there was one girl on the register no one was there on cosmetics like she was damn near there every time that i worked and then i was working the floor and then me and the girl were supposed to switch after you know the shift or whatever i don't know if i was just delirious if i was exhausted if i was laced or something but i was missing little things that were happening this day that i sh that shouldn't have gone over my head the way that it did like like i told you guys at the register there were these baskets that you guys had to put the stuff away as you you know you take a customer there's no more customers right after that customer you go put the stuff away boom 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 come back to the register stuff like that so every single time this day that i kept putting my little returns and my abandoned items back i will come back like I would come back and then I would do another cash, like I would do another customer and then I would go back to my basket and it would be filled with more stuff. Now, my thought process was like, okay, I'm still taking customers. Like after I put stuff away, I still take another customer. So maybe I'm just like not remembering that almost every freaking customer at this point is bringing stuff and abandoning it at the register. So that's just what I thought at first. Like, oh, like damn, like people really don't want their today. But no that's definitely not what happened so i end up peeping that everything that's being put in the basket like that's being that's filling up the basket ends up being stuff that's literally like in the middle like behind the register there were these shelves like there was like this little walkthrough shelf or whatever that had like little eyebrow blades like little eyebrow blades like these like y'all know at the beauty supply store like next to the registers it's just a bunch of little stuff like this i noticed that everything that's starting to fill up this basket is from this section of the store so i put two and two together and i'm like okay somebody's playing with me somebody is putting this stuff in my basket every time that i walk away from the register and the only person that's close to the register is gnome we would get in trouble if we didn't end up um finishing it by the end of the shift like if you had to stay past closing to put away stuff that was under the register you would get in trouble for that so she was obviously trying to either keep me there longer than i needed to be because she knew that i was working a double or she was just again being weird for no reason so later on at the end of my shift or not at the end of my shift but towards the end of my shift i take my last little break or whatever i take my 15 or i think i might have had a 30 because of me working a double or whatever so i log out of my register and then i go take my break so when i get back to my break i end up taking a customer like right away i log into the little um register or whatever and then i go to go give my customer some change or whatever like i put my hand in the door in the drawer to get some change and in the little slot where the pennies is there's thumbtacks in the drawer like faced up now we did have thumbtacks in the like on the register but they were never in the drawer where the freaking money goes like it was not even in the register drawer it was like in the cubbies where the like the counter was like it was in that stuff it was definitely not in the register so it wasn't like it was in the register and me closing and opening the drawer made like the position change and like no like somebody put thumbtacks in my drawer and they weren't in there 30 minutes ago before i took my freaking break so i end up getting mad and i say to um gnome i'm like gnome did you log into the register while i was on my break and she was like no why would i do that i have a register by at the cosmetic section over here and i was just like oh okay and i look at her like like oh, okay like it was she i knew she felt that like it was definitely like a oh okay like a don't play with me oh okay like it wasn't just no oh okay but I wasn't finna, again, you can't even own up to the stuff that you're doing. You do not want smoke with me, for real. And you better be lucky that I didn't prick my finger, because then that would have been a different story. This is the last situation, the big situation. And this is about two months later or whatever. Everybody gets a text, like, everybody's put in a group chat and gets a text from Miss Kim saying that we need to do a staff meeting. Now, I don't know about y'all, but it, to me, an unexpected staff meeting is never a good thing. Usually, if there's like a planned or like a scheduled staff meeting, then it's, you know, just new rules and regulations, maybe a new dress code, something like that. But this one was like a, I need y'all to all come in tomorrow type of thing. So I'm, I'm over here like, 
like i'm scared like i'm like but again i didn't do anything wrong like i wasn't doing anything at that job but just trying to keep the peace and ignore all of the little weird things happening but like i was good at the job that i did like i was good with the customers the customers liked me there were regulars that would come in and chop it up with me hey chesta like there was nothing i wasn't it, like thinking that i was gonna get fired or nothing like that it was brought to our attention by miss kim that a lot of products were starting to come like turn up missing and we had like i don't know if this is just like in the ghetto i don't know but i noticed that like when there's a heavily like populated area like where a lot of black people live they tend to lock up the products that black people use like i don't know what's up with that but like at walmart they lock up the lashes they lock up the hair products that are for curly hair and for dreads or for locks and stuff like that but they don't have like the little pantene and the little three in one four in one the little cheap stuff they don't have none of that locked up what miss kim was getting at is that it obviously had to be somebody that was working because stuff was getting stolen but it was like it wasn't having the sensors on it like we had sensors on everything down to the lashes down to the literally the little these had little sensors and like the actual sensors that would beep if you passed the little thing so she's like i don't know who's doing it so not only are we gonna have to have the clear bags we're gonna have to do a check of y'all's bags every day at the end of the shift like there was like a police officer that stood at the door like he would let customers in like he would open the door for people um and he was there like the entire shift or whatever just to make sure nothing crazy went on because y'all customers would come in cussing you out about oh you don't have a product that they thought that you had they would cuss you out because you don't have enough packs of braiding hair like people would come in there acting a whole ass like showing their ass so there was always a security or he was either a cop or security i'm pretty sure he was a real cop though because there was like a real cop car outside of the beauty supply store so she's like everybody's gonna have to get their bags checked like we're gonna have to be checking everything at the end of the night every time that you guys leave y'all shift or whatever so me i'm not thinking nothing of it like i mean it's a little extra step like it's a little extra hassle before i go home but i'm not worried because i'm not no thief i mean my my fingers might be a little sticky at you know walmart or back then my fingers were a little sticky at like you know forever 21 target stuff like that but my fingers were not sticky at no place that i was working at that's not no 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 track record that i want to you know create for myself definitely not so i'm just like okay like everybody's kind of looking like okay y'all would think wouldn't they know who was doing it because of cameras but there were no security cameras like apparently like ab had told me or one of the girls had told me like the security cameras did not work there like at all and i don't know why but like they had not been working for a minute i don't know if they just didn't want to pay for them to get fixed but there were no security cameras in that damn store fast forward a little bit and i'm working another stressful ass double shift or whatever and like nothing happens i mean girls are acting weird or whatever like i guess um dream and gnome they like gathered up some minions to not like me and stuff they're all acting funny towards me not really being helpful not really like helping me out woo -woo -woo, other than like the homegirls that i had already made at the job but nothing ends up happening like the entire day and then we end up all going to the back you know it's time to do the checks or whatever we punch out we're getting our stuff out the lockers who do mind you earlier this day i had made me a little tiktok um in the bathroom on my break or whatever and i was just like you know pov when you're working at a job and everybody is a hater or something like that like i didn't care i'm not gonna lie i was definitely doing tiktok back then and i did not care if somebody that i worked with saw that because for one i did not lie for two i was nothing but nice to all of those girls that started being weird to me like y'all know if i was being messy or if i was being rude i would say that i would be honest and transparent about it because there have been times where i've acted distasteful before not at this job but like just in general in life where i deserved you know the treatment that i got from people so this is not one of those times though i was nice to everybody in that damn store we go back there i get my little clear bag out of my locker gnome is back there uh dream is back there and i think stassi i think that was all the girls that was on the shift this day so miss kim is back there and i get my little clear bag out of my locker and there's two pairs of lashes in my bag that are in the packaging with the little sensors on it so mind you i'm not stupid for one we just got told that somebody was stealing why would i steal like after the fact if y'all think that i'm the one who stole why would it be after the fact and then two why would i leave the sensors on when we all literally have the ability to take the sensors off 
so what are you doing because like i did wear lashes from the beauty supply store and like sometimes i would get it from there but i would buy them and i would never buy them on my shift i don't even think we were supposed to buy stuff on our shift because it would get like you know mixed up or like we would have to wait till we're off to buy stuff you can't just buy stuff while you're working it so that's not even something that i would have done even if i was buying it i wouldn't have bought it yet miss kim ends up seeing my little bag with the lashes in it and she's just like oh no like Chessa, I can't believe this. I'm disappointed in you. Like, we just talked about this at the staff meeting. She was like, if you don't want me to get some security involved, I need you to clear your pockets. I need you to clear your bag. I need you to put them lashes back or whatever. And she was just like, you can't come back. Um, like, basically, they can't. They don't tolerate stealing and that they're going to have to fire me. And I'm just like, whoa. First of all, Miss Kim, I did not do that. Pull, them, pull the tape. Pull the tape, cause no. And then I like, that's when I remember that the, there's no tape to pull. Like the literal camera, cameras do not work. So I was just like, bruh, like this cannot be happening. Garden Gnome, Dream, all of them are just sitting there like stuck. They don't have nothing to say. And I'm just like, so basically I'm just like, lashes, really Gnome? Like, really? If you didn't want me to work here that bad, you could have just told me you were too insecure to work alongside me. Or you could have just told me what your real pressure was because this, this is, this is a below you. Like even you, this is, this is, this is a different level of hater, even for you, like for real. So I'm going in on her. I'm like, you hating ass. I really needed this job. Like you hating ass. She's calling me a broke, all broke, 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 all types of broke. Mind you, how you calling me broke and we working at the same place? Like, girl, really be for real with yourself. So I'm raising my voice. She's raising her voice. And she ends up saying something like, oh, you thought it was cute to make that little TikTok today, huh? About how you working with haters, huh? I showed you hater. Like, you really the hater. Like, you making TikToks about me. Like, yo, TikTok not even popping. Like, you want to be an influencer so bad. <laughs> I'm like, you lucky these cameras don't work. I should really show ass right now. So that's when she's like, hit me. And like, y'all know in the shows and the movies where like everything is slow motion and they put that deep voice and it's like, and the blubbery mouth and it's like, hit me. I remember thinking, I'm about to beat this bitch up. That's exactly how I heard it. So what did I do? I hit her. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, we get to fighting in the freaking break room. Yes, it's ghetto. Yes, it sounds like a uh, Baddies West. But y'all already know, I'm, I was part of Baddies South before Baddies South was even a thing, baby. Which, not cute. Don't be like me. I'm not promoting fighting. I'm not, don't, don't be like me. Don't do that. I was 18. I'm 22 now. I know better, okay? You telling me to hit you is implying that I wouldn't. Like, what, why are you telling me to hit you thinking that I won't hit you? Because if I'm making videos about you in the same workplace of, as you, the same day you're on the shift, Knowing that you know what my TikTok is, why do you think that I'm scared of you in any type of way? Like, why do you think that it's just, like, beyond me for me to hit you? Like, why do you think that? So, I'll give it, it wasn't that long. I'll give it about 80 seconds. We get to fighting. I'm on top of her. Beep, 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 boop, 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 beep. She's trying to hit me. Nothing's really connecting. I think she got me one good time. She got me one good time. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm not gonna say nothing connected. One thing connected, but she left no marks on my face. Boop, 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 boop. I beat her up. And then the cop that was at the front, I guess, heard the commotion. He runs back there. He separates us. He's like, what the are y'all doing? Y'all can't be doing this. Miss Kim is going to be mad. She's going to fire both of y'all. And I'm like, I don't care. She can get fired too right alongside me. Get Let's get fired together, please. But she didn't even end up getting fired, y'all. Like, Miss Kim ended up coming back there. And she was like, if you don't want me to call the police and, and get you arrested for the stealing and for fighting, then you need to leave right now. And you, need, you can't come back to the store. Which, mind y'all, I have been back to the store plenty of times. Like, I literally still shop there i literally got these nails from there um like girl she probably don't even recognize me i done lost like 40 pounds glue up hair looks different i'm just a bad bitch now and yeah like that was the end of the story i got fired um she threatened to press charges but she didn't press charges on me and i ended up seeing gnome working there like some months later or whatever and she didn't say nothing to me but literally every other girl that worked there she was not there like I didn't see anybody working there. Stassi was gone. AB was gone. Dream was gone. Everybody was gone. Like, except for Gnome. She probably still works there to this day. She probably has not elevated. Like, I'm not even going to be a hater. Because it's... I'm 22 now. This was when I was 18. Maybe she was going on... Going through a lot at home. I don't know what was going on with the girl. It doesn't really justify her weird behavior. But, like, maybe she, you know, grew from this situation. So, hopefully you did grow if you're watching this. But remember when you said that I wanted to be an influencer so bad? 
you see that that's probably what was my motivation so thank you Buki um oh and to tell y'all why I named dream that I named her that because I felt like she wanted me for real and she had a girlfriend and I don't know maybe she she wanted me but it was in her dreams like she could have never with me so I don't even know why she would ever play like I was saying she she was flirting with me and woo -doo -woo -doo -woo. I don't know it's not really as like it's pretty it's pretty anticlimactic now that I'm saying what the name was or like what the name meant but I just felt like all of that like she was delusional like I felt like this whole thing was a fever dream because what is wrong with y'all so that was why I named her dream and yeah y'all that's the end of the story time um i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did make sure you comment like and subscribe comment other videos that you guys want to see from me turn on the post notification bell so you never miss when i post a video follow me on all my social medias that are in the link tree in the description box below but remember i do not have instagram right now so just follow my twitter and my tiktok um oh also i don't know if you guys know but i do catch cheaters i do little loyalty tests or whatever so if you guys want one y'all can email me the same email that's in my description box is the email that you can email me that for just make sure to include your phone number or whatever definitely go check out the small business that i put in the beginning of this video if you missed it go back and watch that and i love you guys so much i'll be doing another video soon 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 and stay tuned 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 i'm about to do a um unpopular opinions video so look out for that i'm gonna be trying some i have a few exotic snacks um that i'm gonna be trying when i do that video it should be coming out in the next couple of days and i'm gonna catch you on the next one bye